everyone. I want to welcome our viewers here in the United States and around the world. I'm Don Lemon. I am live in Baltimore, Maryland. It is midnight here, Eastern Time, and this city has been under a curfew since 10 p.m. for two hours now. Initially, there were people who defied uh, that curfew order, defied the order and stayed out on the streets. Police moved in methodically and moved them off the streets. And in the course of two hours, there is barely anyone on the streets now. In some locations, there may be people who pop up or crop up. Uh, there may be crowds who try to, to uh, pop up, but police have gained control of this city. Quite a different scene than last night, than 24 hours ago when last I came from you at this scene. Sinan's correspondents are stationed throughout the city. Uh, one of them is Sinan's Miguel Marquez, and he's, he brings us the very latest from uh, where he is. Miguel, what are you seeing? On Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the main corridor that leads from North Avenue, where a lot of uh, the, the the protest was today, and where a lot of the violence was last night, then Pennsylvania goes all the way downtown. Along this corridor, we saw a lot of the activity that we saw yesterday. We're not seeing it tonight because of this: a very heavy police presence, a curfew in effect, and slowly but surely, they have moved people back. There were. Up until 20, 30 minutes ago, there were small pockets of people hanging out right where we are, but then the National Guard moving in with Humvees. We also have National Guard down here with Humvees, and you can see all the way down Pennsylvania Avenue. For the most part, uh, it is clear. Back in the neighborhoods, I will tell you, there are people roaming about, defying the curfew, uh, playing a bit of a cat and mouse game with police, and you have police cars then cruising through the neighborhoods in great numbers, seven, eight, nine, ten police cars, sometimes with the lights on, sometimes with them off, trying to get people to go home, basically, by pure show of force. There was a helicopter overhead constantly putting light all over the neighborhood here. This is the worst of the worst. A few uh, blocks uh, away from here is where Freddie Gray was arrested. A few blocks beyond that is where the Western District Police Station uh, is, where so much of the of the protest and the rage has been focused, because that's the place. Those were the where the police officers were, were stationed, and that's the place that Freddie Gray was taken, uh, had to be transferred to an ambulance once he got there because he had fallen into coma, a coma and then never recovered. Uh, a very, very tense night. Uh, this is the first night of uh, several more curfews to come. Uh, we will see how it goes, but so far uh, it is peaceful and, and nobody is uh, flouting it too heavily. John? I think the most important thing you said, Miguel, is so far. Uh, Miguel, I, I, I'm not sure if you were able to listen to the police press conference. Anthony Batts, uh, the police commissioner, just wrapped it up a short time ago. Surprisingly, only at this point, only seven people arrested uh, for defying the curfew. Uh, that may be right. We saw, we went, we flew down to, 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 to South Baltimore, uh, figuratively, not literally, and watch yourself there, got the car coming through. Uh, we flew out to South Baltimore because we heard that there were riots down in that direction. Uh, we got down there. We saw three arrests in South Baltimore. There wasn't really a whole lot of activity. There were a few uh, police officers in um, in uh, riot gear down there, but not much other than that. Uh, and we've seen some arrests up here as well. So perhaps in all, about seven arrests uh, might be right. Um, but uh, you know, not not a lot given uh, the the. 235 that we had yesterday and a, a very, very tense evening. Don? All right, all right, Miguel, thanks for the information. I want you to stand by because I want to get to CNN's Jason Carroll. Uh, Jason, it appears to be some action where you are. Take us to, to the scene. <clears throat> well, I just a uh about a half hour or so ago. Things are calm now, but about a half hour or so, we had two cars that were coming up the street here right in the line of officers. You know, you heard earlier Miguel talking about this cat and mouse game that some of these some of these people come out here and play, and that's what we saw. They would drive up and then stop and then turn around and drive away. Police showing a lot of restraint, uh, not moving forward at that point, firing uh, pepper balls, also firing rubber batons. This is what they look like here. We picked one of them up. This is what they were firing at the cars and also at some of those protesters who defied the curfew. There were a number of people out here, Don, as you know, uh, throughout the night uh, trying to do everything they can to get people to pay attention to abide by the curfew. One of those people I'm going to bring, their in, bring her in, Pastor Coleman, Reverend 
Cole, it's been a long night. I know. It's been a long <laughs> night for me, too. I know you, you, you were out here. I saw you late in the afternoon, early in the evening. You were out on the bullhorn saying over and over, calming the crowd, telling people to go home. Uh, how do you think it went? I think it went very well. Excuse me. I have um, the world, America, the world, I have very little voice left. Um, but I really think that it went very well. I think not just myself, but the the other clergy that was out here, um, our elected officials that were out here, you guys from the media that was out here, I think you guys, all of you guys played a role in what took place tonight. I didn't look at it negative. I looked at everybody collectively coming together, making a difference tonight that brought about a better outcome than last night. And, and, and most, of, and, and we should be very clear here, most of the people who came out listened to what you said, listened to what police said. And when the curfew went into place, went home. It was just a few number of people out here that ended up causing some of the problems that we saw. And that is true. I, I just, I want to take the credit, but I believe that it was really an act of God. As I mentioned to you earlier, I prayed the whole way here. I prayed um, in the car. I parked 10 blocks away and walked and prayed, talked to God. I prayed while I was here, and I believe that if you seek God's face, as I did, simply asking for peace starting from when i posted on facebook that i'm believing that god will bring peace to the city of baltimore also at one point don earlier in the evening i know you were talking about that unity line that we saw out here those members of the community that locked arm in arm and stood between themselves and the and the uh, the police that were out here you were out here as well standing between the police and some of those people who were agitated here uh -huh. in the crowd what was that like well, as I was telling some people, because a lot of people were approaching me and they were saying, well, why would you stand there with the Crips and the Bloods and all those thugs, they're murderers? I said, well, tonight, all I looked at them is, was they were out here as individuals trying to bring about peace. Uh, I'm not, I'm no judge, nor jury. I don't know any of those individuals. I was just here as a proper representation of God in, in letting people know that clergy, the clergy here in not just Baltimore, but the city of Maryland care about what's happening. And when we join together, we join together as one in unity, understanding that God said in his word, he'll speak through a rock. And, and Pastor uh, Coleman, a, a lot of people now wonder, Re Reverend, <laughs> okay. a lot of people are now wondering <laughs> about tomorrow. What mm -hmm. happens tomorrow? What do you, what do you think will happen tomorrow? <laughs> Because, um, let me say, because I'm walking a faith walk with God throughout this whole process, as I told you, going up Mondami Mall on my way to Shiloh when they called on the clergy, and I said, okay, I'm not going to go down there. Someone said, well, they're calling clergy to the mall, getting there, and I was there by myself. God was there with me. We and when you were there convincing a man who had a, a, a trash a bucket not to throw it through the window of the target that yes. was there. He... As, as I was telling um, someone earlier, I walked up, I was maybe like about maybe 20, 30 feet, and he, and he had one of the trash cans that had stone up around the bottom, and he was determined he was going to break down Target's door. But through the grace of God, they were all targeting Target for whatever reason. Ross was there. Um, the dollar store was there. But for whatever reason, they were targeting Target. He wasn't able to do it. I actually spoke to him, and he, in the, all the other maybe 30, 40 people that was around stopped. And so I, I believe God that they listened to him. Reverend, I want to thank you so much. See, I, fi I finally got there, Reverend, as post pastor. Yes. Finally got there. And tomorrow, to answer your question, I'm believing God that tomorrow would be as good as tonight. Maybe even a better day. If not better. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Reverend Coleman. Thank you. So, Don, again, I want you to take a look at the scene right now. Some of those officers who were there, that line, now gone. Uh, just a few officers yeah. uh, standing around, but that line that we've seen out here for the past several hours has finally broken rank. And uh, things much calmer than it was uh, even just about an hour ago. Don. I, I, Jason, I had four parents on earlier, and I couldn't, I didn't get any of their names right, so I understand it is late. And, and I want to say that, you you know, we have been giving a lot of credit to law enforcement, a lot of credit to the leaders, but also big credit should be given here uh, to members of the community because there were people standing in between the police line and some of the, the protesters and saying, don't do this, you don't want this. They deserve a lot of credit.
absolutely, Don. Without question, as we were standing out here, if it wasn't the Reverend, it was just other, it was a librarian who we met out here, also another educator, people who came out and unlocked arms. A woman came out with her 14-year-old daughter, had her stand on these front lines, standing between some of those here in the community who, who were agitated and the police who were standing behind them. The community uh, definitely deserves credit for keeping things as calm as they were. All right. Jason Carroll, thank you. Great job reporting all day. Jason, uh, we'll stand by. We'll get back to you. I want to get to CNN's Brian Todd now. Uh, Brian has been watching uh, a back and forth between police and some of the people who defied uh, this curfew. Brian, what's going on where you are? We're at easily one of the most heavily fortified intersections in all of Baltimore. This is Pennsylvania Avenue and Cumberland Street. As we've been reporting for the last uh, hour or so, things have calmed down quite a bit in this neighborhood, but still a little bit tense uh, as, as the police start to wind down their presence a little bit. Setting the scene for you here, this was the scene of a confrontation. You see all this debris down on the street as this police bus moves through here. We also, when we first came upon this intersection a few minutes ago, there were overturned trash cans here. We were told this is one of the intersections where police had to fire uh, pepper balls at protesters when they would not disperse after the curfew took effect. So this, one of the uh, points of confrontation in this neighborhood between police and protesters who did not want to move uh, during the curfew. How heavily fortified is this intersection? Well, we've got uh, Bearcat vehicles here. Uh, police still ringing this road over here. They've broken down one of their lines here, but we still got officers here. And look at this, you've got an MRAP over here. This is just a massive, heavily fortified vehicle designed to protect soldiers from IEDs during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. One of the most heavily fortified vehicles you've ever seen here. And you've got officers there on top of it. Not sure how long they're going to be here. Now, again, as the situation has calmed down, uh, the police still maintaining a presence. The police commissioner, Anthony Batts, just said that the National Guard will be in this neighborhood of North and Pennsylvania Avenue tomorrow. So they will be augmenting the police presence here. Don, during the initial um, response, the police response in Ferguson, we did reporting and others did reporting about how the police at least were perceived to be too militarized, going around wearing too much Kevlar carrying too many heavy weapons, going around in vehicles like the MRAP. I'm not sure you're going to hear that criticism this time because of what happened in Baltimore last night, but the police are going to have to walk a fine line, and so far they seem to have done it fairly well. Uh, you've got a group of officers over here uh, congregating. We're not sure whether they're just deploying to some other intersection or whether they're going to be circulating out. Now, this intersection, because of the confrontations here, still looks like a little bit of a war zone, not nearly as bad as the intersections that we saw last night. But this was a point of confrontation uh, roughly an hour ago when police uh, confronted protesters in this neighborhood. Don, things are calming down. Yeah. We're hoping for the best as we head into the morning hours. So, Brian, you have been out talking to people. You know, you're not only just out here covering it at night to see what happens in, under the cover of darkness, but um, I mean, when darkness falls. But you're also out covering it during the day, and you get a sense from people as to how they're feeling about the difference between last week, uh, this weekend, uh, especially last night and today. What's the sentiment out there? Don, you get a, a real sense that there is um, immense pride uh, in the residents of these neighborhoods. They want these neighborhoods to be stable and safe. They're upset about what happened last night. We went around to, a clean, to an area uh, in the East Monument section of Baltimore this morning where a woman who runs a check cashing business was very despondent and upset because they looted her store. They took an ATM out and uh, uh, smashed it on the street, took money out of it. She said, look, this is one of the only places that people can go to in this neighborhood to get our service. She's upset with it. And she's upset that a lot of the uh, younger people were kind of laughing and thinking that that, that was okay. What you have tonight is a real brushback uh, toward what happened last night. Citizens coming out here determined to be peaceful, determined to, yes, show civil dis disobedience, but to police themselves when they need to. And that's been one of the more impressive things tonight. We also saw it last week when they were protesting in front of the Western Precinct headquarters in Baltimore, <laughs> that when members of the crowd 
get out of hand, maybe start throwing some things or being a little bit too aggressive toward the police. We have seen volunteers. We have seen other people in the crowds pushing them back, saying just back off, calm down. So there is a lot of self-policing going on here, uh, which we do need to mention when we mention all the unrest that's happened in Baltimore over the past day and a half.